Hey folks, here's a little modular project that I had to build for a, another project in 4.27 that I hope will be useful to you. Here we go. So when you open up, you're in your kind of standard VR pawn, and I've basically added some new functionality to the uh, grab component. So for anything where you can grab, you can pick it up still as normal, but if you go and you bring your second hand over and you grab, now you have the ability to scale it up and down and you're still holding it and still moving it around. And there's some really nice haptic feedback in here uh, that I'm proud of myself for figuring out some code for that just basically gives you a little vibration um, every time you are going up a certain percentage of scale. And right now I don't have any gravity here, so I can just kind of leave it wherever I want. And this is a easy component that you can drop onto anything that also has the grab component, though it'll do that automatically. And this is an easy component to put on, again, anything that also has the grab component. So I can pick up this ball, scale it up, scale, scale down. Uh, and, you know, right now I have gravity off, but we could, of course, also have something with gravity on, and that'd be fine as well. So, you know, that still falls and responds to gravity. And so, for example, there's a plane over here, and I can grab the plane and scale that up and scale it down. Um, but this plane also has the ability to do this cool little thing. If I press the trigger, it'll snap to the wall. So what's actually happening is it'll find whatever surface is behind it, and then it will snap to that surface. So if you are, you know, for example, trying to show someone uh, a drawing, and then you want to then <laughs> decorate the room with that drawing, now you have a way of squeezing the grip and then squeezing the trigger and having it snap to a particular location. And I'm actually using the BPI interaction interface that's already set up for the, uh, the rifles here. So when you hold this and then you squeeze the trigger, you know, within this blueprint, there is something that is telling it to uh, fire those projectiles. So I'm literally just doing a different kind of interface call uh, to make that happen. If we like, we can also use the B or Y keys just to spawn more of these little picture elements. And right now I'm just grabbing uh, a random texture, basically, from just what comes with the VR template. And you notice it spawns uh, six feet in front of wherever my face is. It's also six feet wide. And then what I can do is I can move forward and I can grab this. I've got a little extra collision on it to make it easier to grab and then snap any of these to the wall or the floor, as the case may be. Or, you know, even an object like that. Spawn a few more. And now we're just getting some, some very nice decorations for our environment. Notice the collision is on these, so it is knocking things over. And there we go. I feel like a, a genuine interior decorator with Z fighting. Uh, anyways, next steps for this is uh, I'm very happy with the scaling system I have. I would like to go full tilt brush with this and actually allow you to just, you know, grab the entire world. If you're not grabbing anything, basically just squeeze those triggers down and grab the world and rotate it and scale the whole thing up and down uh, just to kind of extend this further. But I hope even in its current form, this public GitHub will be useful to you. And if all you care about is the functionality, feel free to <laughs> say goodbye now. Uh, just grab the GitHub code and have fun. Uh, for anyone still sticking around, let me just give you a little bit of information about what's set up here. So we have a folder called Grab Bag. Um, these are all the new things. The VR template is uh, almost exactly the same as it normally is, except I have VR template map, which is here, just slightly modified for some of these other setups. Um, what I started doing, just to jump over to the backup folder, is I began with looking at taking the grabbable cube here and uh, just modifying it to be kind of its own setup that would be a little bit different uh, but would actually incorporate the resizing elements directly into the cube but that felt a little bit limited because it would only work with a resizable cube so then i decided to do it on a component basis and so what we have now is things like this you'll see that grab component but we also have the resize component with its own very special haptic effect over here in the haptics folder. And what we can do is if we open up this, we'll see edit resize component. We have a few things going on in here. Um, at the top at begin play, we check to see if there's already a grab component. We do need a grab component for this to work. So if there is not a grab component, it is going to add one. And then we're using our interface calls. So you'll notice in class settings, we have this resize actor interface. It is uh, very, very simple, literally just has a begin resize and an end resize that is able to accept the motion controllers as uh, elements to change the scale. 
And so basically we are getting that first hand and second hand. Uh, notice for a component, it's important to enable event tick. Otherwise you won't have any event tick functionality working. Um, we set the first hand for set the second hand because that's going to be different for your left hand and right hand moving. We say we are now resizing. We are getting an initial distance between those hands and initial scale, a little print string to debug that. And then over an event tick, we're just constantly checking to see if we should be resizing. And now the answer is true. So we go through here and we are getting that distance between the hands as an absolute value and we are changing the scale uh, relative to that distance between our hands. We are setting actor scale 3D to basically get to the parent of whatever the uh, component is, so the owner. And then here's the fun little haptic feedback thing. Um, I'm basically multiplying what we have by 10 just so I don't have to deal with rounding float values. And then I'm basically saying every time we hit a new integer, every time, you know, 11 doesn't equal 11 anymore, it now equals 12, which would correspond to like a scale of 1.2. Uh, then we're going to play this nice little haptic effect on both the left and right hand since they're both involved with scaling. And then you have almost like a nice little ticker that starts to uh, set that up as you are um, scaling something up and down, it feels good. Lastly, once you let go, we are no longer resizing and we turn off event tick because no need to ever have event tick running if you don't need it to. And we also just have a little debug print string to say what the end scale is. Um, just realizing also we don't need this on grabbed or on dropped because that is a leftover from the uh, grab component. Just that end resize and begin resize is all we need here. Uh, and then um, over in <laughs> VR Pawn Grabby, which is just the modified version of the VR Pawn, you'll see I've got a few colored areas where I've made some modifications. Um, this would look different in Unreal Engine 5 because of the enhanced input system and some of the changes to these systems, but it's still uh, fairly straightforward, I think, to adapt this. Maybe I'll find time to do it, or maybe someone else can. It's a public GitHub. So basically, whenever someone is grabbing something, we are just adding a little bit of extra information to check to see if it has a resize component. And if it does, which we just do by getting the owner and looking for that resize component, um, then we basically are going to be aware <laughs> that it's time to start resizing the actor. And of course, the first hand uh, and the second hand, first hand, second hand, or other hand, uh, will change depending on whether you start by grabbing with the right hand or the left hand. You'll see down here it is the opposite. And then when you let go, we want to make sure that after we have released, we check to see if there's that resize component, and if it exists, then we go ahead and we uh, end resize, which triggers something differently in everything because it's an interface call, but over here, it is going to do that. Just, you know, set the scale, tell it to stop resizing, and that's it. Now over here, I did move out this logic. I didn't delete it, but there was a system that was basically saying, hey, if you're holding something and then you try to grab it with your other hand, make sure the first hand drops it. So I don't want that because this is in fact the logic I'm using to try to activate resizing an object. And then down here, um, I have this little, you know, input just the normal input, not enhanced input for spawning something in front of me. Uh, this is to get the location exactly um, six feet in front of me, about 183 uh, centimeters. And then we are spawning this particular uh, blueprint, which has our little picture inside. And I also just have some random, you know, options for what this can be uh, in terms of what's actually in the picture. I do a little bit of rotation afterwards because planes don't usually want to be <laughs> looking at you upright by default. They're usually looking at the ground. And then I go ahead and I update the texture. This was a little um, debug I was doing for this, just using the space bar originally. Uh, don't worry about that unless you want to mess around with just, you know, snapping and spawning things without VR. Uh, and then lastly, let's just look briefly at what is inside of BP picture over here. So at begin play, we go ahead and we update the texture. We're also doing this on the construction script. It's just checking to see what is inside that texture parameter and uh, putting that into the actual uh, material that we have on the static mesh there. So this has a parameter right there for texture. So this can be modified and we're using a dynamic material instance in order to make that happen right here on that update texture event, which we are also able to call by the way at any time, but because we have it on the construction script, it should actually do it on its own quite easily. Very nice modern art. And so then down here, 
uh, once we have our little texture worked out, we have that event trigger pressed, which is coming from the VR interaction BPI, so blueprint interface, and that can be seen over here. I haven't changed anything from that, and we are just saying like, okay, you're already grabbing something. Uh, now you're pressing the trigger, so let's go ahead and do a line trace for object types in the scene of world static mesh. And let's go about 500 centimeters out forward. You know, you don't want to do this to something too far away. And then we are going to basically detach because we're grabbing it right now, detach it from the hand, uh, get our rotations correct, and then go ahead and rotate it again, <laughs> get our rotations correct in a couple different ways. This is just how I do my own little quaternion vector, Euler math, whatever. Um, snap it to that that surface, move it one centimeter off the surface so we're not getting any Z fighting on it. Uh, make sure we're teleporting and trying not to trigger like sweeping kind of stuff or uh, physics. We're trying not to trigger physics or anything like that. And then I'm just using the pistol fire haptic event for when it snaps against the wall. I could create a new one if I wanted to. You can too, it's all on GitHub. Uh, and then because this is based on which hand you're using, I'm actually just copying some of the haptic feedback um, code over here to basically check to see uh, should it be the left hand or the right hand and you know just play based on that hand and that should be it just a quick little fly through of this little github project that again you know I hope it's useful for you uh, adapting to your own needs and um, that is it for now thanks everyone cheers my own private pantheon.